Hello friends, this video on motion in a plane part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 25 before going ahead with part 26. Now we'll talk of another topic that is uniform circular motion. So now we'll discuss uniform circular motion. However, we have discussed the same topic in motion in one dimension. Now we will look at the same topic considering the vector quantities in two dimensions. So we will talk of velocity and acceleration and the direction of velocity and acceleration in case of uniform circular motion. What is uniform circular motion? The body is moving in a circular path with a uniform velocity. right? So let us look at this. What happens is, let us suppose we have this car which is initially at some position P1. right? It moves along a circular path somewhat like this. So this is the position vector in this case like how I showed you in the graph for the previous scenarios when we measure the position vector from the origin. So in case of uniform circular motion we would make with the reference point would be the center of the circle. So from the center we draw this vector which denotes the position vector of this car. So this is basically a uniform circular motion. So in this case what happens is velocity at any point what would be the direction of velocity at any point it would be tangential. Let us suppose if I tell you what is the velocity at point P1 it would be tangential to P1. Similarly at this point it is a tangent. Similarly at this point and so on. So what happens here basically is the velocity at every point keeps changing because it is tangential at every point and also the velocity is in the direction of motion. Like suppose we take the example of this car. This car is moving in this direction. So the direction of velocity will be tangential to this point plus along this direction. Right? So that is all about the direction of velocity. Now when it comes to acceleration, what is the velo what would be the direction of acceleration? We discussed in, in case of linear motion also. When it comes to acceleration, the direction of acceleration would be the direction of delta v that is the change in velocity. Let us suppose we consider another point p2 here. So we consider one position p1 another position P2. Now let us suppose the direction of velocity at P1 is this and the direction of velocity at P2 is this. Let us suppose we denote this by V2, we denote this by V1. Now we want to find out the direction of acceleration. Now we know that acceleration is nothing but change in velocity. So the direction of acceleration would be the direction of change in velocity. So how do you, you know the change which is the direction for change in velocity? We will use the same principle which we used for vector subtraction. The same method, the triangle method of vector subtraction. So this is V1 and this is V2. So what would be delta V? Delta V would be this line. So now if you draw this, I mean if you calculate this value, you find that delta V is this. So the change is well in velocity is acting in this direction. So the change in velocity would be acting towards the center of the circle. Now the acceleration will be acting towards the center of the circle. So direction of acceleration would be towards the center. Now since this acceleration at all point of time, the acceleration acts towards the center of this circular path, therefore this is known as centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. Right? So both average and instantaneous acceleration 
acts towards the center of the circle in case of a uniform circular motion. So when we talk of velocity, it acts tangential at every point in the direction of motion. When we talk of acceleration, it acts towards the center of the circle at all points. Now I also showed you how did we prove that acceleration always acts towards the center. Now going to the next slide, we will try to find out the magnitude of acceleration or the magnitude of centripetal acceleration. Now we'll try to evaluate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. So here again we consider that the car is moving, let us suppose, from one initial position P1 to some position P2. Fine. So let us say that the initial position vector of the car was given by R. Now at point P2, when the car is at point P2, let us say that the position vector is given by R dash. Now what would be the velocity at P1? Velocity at P1 will be V and the velocity at P2 will be V dash. So they will be tangential to the particular points. Okay. Now in order to find out the change in velocity, what we do? We draw V1. I mean this is V. And this is V dash, right? So the change in velocity is this, that is delta V. So this is delta V. Now in this figure, if you join these two points, P1 and P2, suppose we join these two points. So you can say that this triangle and these triangle, these two triangles are similar. How can, how can you say that? I will just show that to you. The lines are not straight enough. So please bear with me. So if you see this triangle that is OP1 and OP1, P2, this is one triangle. And the other triangle is, let us name it as ABC. So this triangle and ABC, these two triangles are similar. How can you say that? Because this V and this V dash of these triangles, I mean this and this are parallel and equal. Similarly, this V dash and this V dash are parallel and equal. And this becomes a common side for the two triangles. So we can say that these two triangles are similar triangles. So if these two triangles are similar, then we can say that delta V by V will be equal to delta R by R. What is delta R? Delta R is nothing but this length. So because this is R dash, this is R. So we can say that this length is delta R. That is P1, P2. Delta R is nothing but P1, P2. So we can say this. Now this R is nothing but this R at all points, this R will always be equal to the radius of the circle because the radius will remain the same throughout. So we can write it as delta R by capital R. So we arrive at this expression that is delta V by V is equal to delta R by capital R. Fine. Now let us come back to the main point. What we wanted to do here was to calculate the centripetal acceleration. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but we are calculating instantaneous acceleration. So this is limit delta t tends to zero, delta v by delta t. This is what is dv by dt in other words. Now what we do we will just replace delta V with the previous value. So what is delta V? From this expression, we can take the value of delta V as delta R V into delta R by capital R into delta T. We can write this. So again, this we can write as V by capital R limit delta T tends to 0, 
delta r by delta t. Now what is this? This is again nothing but dr by dt. So we can write v by capital R dr by dt. Now what is dr by dt? That is again v. So this becomes v square by r. So what did we get? We find that the centripetal acceleration which we normally denote by ac is equal to v square by r. So this is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. So whenever we talk of uniform circular motion, the acceleration always acts towards the center. That is the direction of the acceleration is always towards the center. And the magnitude of the acceleration is given by V square by R. So this is going to be very much useful when we go ahead and start solving problems on circular motion. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.